the pull-up and its mirror twin, the chin-up. Not only are they some of the most famous exercises you can perform, but they're some of the most practical as well. In fact, when asked what his most recommended exercise would be, Arnold Schwarzenegger said he would choose the chin-up. Sure, pull-ups can give you obscenely large lats, but they also have a lot of practical benefits. The most obvious one being that they can help you get out of situations like this one. Oh, you fools. Should have done pull-ups, bro. Not only can doing chin-ups keep you from falling to your death, but it actually has a more day-to-day -day practical application. Pull-ups will increase the strength of your grip, thoracic spine, core, but most importantly, it can fix your sore shoulders. In fact, the bottom portion of the pull-up may be so beneficial, it can even replace shoulder surgery. I'm going to repeat that. Hanging from a bar may be so beneficial, it can even replace shoulder surgery. This information comes from Dr. John M. Kirsch, a board-certified orthopedic surgeon who, after 30 years of performing shoulder surgery, decided that it is actually probably better for most people to simply hang from a bar. He claims that we have similar shoulder builds to other great apes and we have allowed crucial muscles in our shoulders to atrophy. It is important to note that although many personal trainers and physical therapists have begun playing with this theory, it is not yet widely acknowledged by the scientific community at large. However, Dr. John M. Kirsch did perform a 28-year longitudinal study, which featured 92 patients. Of the 92 patients, two of them had to drop out. Of the remaining 90, all of them were cured of their shoulder pain, and two of them were able to avoid shoulder surgery altogether. Again, this is not a highly peer-reviewed study, but personally, I think it just makes sense. Not only have pull-ups and dead hangs improved my shoulder mobility, but when I tried the Ninja Warrior course for the first time, specifically swinging from ring to ring, I was shocked by how intuitive the motion was. I think there definitely is something to this theory that we have similar shoulder builds to other great apes. Shoulder pain is one of the highest reported sources for pain, not only for athletes but for people in general. This is because most people spend a great deal of time in what's called a flexion position. Our bodies exist in a perpetual state of use it or lose it. The technical term for this is atrophy. This means that when you spend a great deal of time with your shoulders hunched inward, then the muscles on the inside will become tighter and the muscles on your back will become weaker. This is called a muscle imbalance and it is a very common source of soreness. When you have pain due to a muscle imbalance, the first thing you need to do is stretch the muscles which are too tight and strengthen the weak opposing muscles. In the case of having rounded shoulders, you need to strengthen your scapula. Now, scapula is a bit of a strange term in that certain people use it to have different meanings. Your scapula are your shoulder blades. But in the fitness world, you may hear people say things like engage your scapula or retract your scapula. What they mean by that is they mean to engage the muscles that pull your shoulder blades together. For the purpose of this video, when I say scapula, I'm not referring to your shoulder blades, but instead the complex group of muscles that are used to pull them together. The scapula is important because it is essentially the equal but opposite muscles that are pulling your shoulders forward. Typically, if you're hunched inwards, it's because your shoulders are pulling you inwards. Many people believe that chin-ups and pull-ups do not improve your shoulder posture, but this is only true if you do not use the entire range of motion. It is the bottom part of the pull-up which will improve your shoulder posture the most when performed correctly. It is also the part of the pull-up that most people are weakest in. If you can't do a single pull-up, I recommend that you start with dead hangs and active hangs. As I stated previously, not only are these the most beneficial aspects of the pull-up, but they are also the part of the pull-up that most people are weakest in. Because it's all grip strength, dead hangs can be a challenge at any level. Even if you can dead hang for 10 minutes, you could always try and dead hang for 20 minutes, or hang with one hand. But when you're first getting started, you should make it your goal to be able to dead hang for a solid minute. While you're doing your dead hangs, I also recommend that you incorporate some active hangs. From the bottom position, simultaneously pull your shoulder blades back while turning your chest upwards. Hold yourself in this position for approximately three seconds. Once you've become comfortable with the dead and active hang, it's time to start moving closer to an actual pull-up. What I typically see at the gym 
is people trying to build up to being able to do a pull-up by using the pull-up assist machine. This may work, but it doesn't engage your core as much and also robs you of the initial active hang when you get to the bottom. Instead, I recommend that you get yourself into the top position of a pull-up and as slowly as you can, lower yourself down to the bottom. This is called an eccentric movement. Any exercise can be performed with one of three different methods. First, there is isometric. This is typically the easiest, but it also helps you perfect your technique and your mind-muscle connection. Then there's concentric. This is the fluid motion of the exercise that you most commonly see at the gym. It's what people prefer because, quite frankly, it looks the sexiest. Lastly, there is eccentric. This is when you slowly release yourself from the flex position. For most people, most of the time, eccentric movements are the best. Eccentric movements are better because when you're first starting off, not only is it safer, but it also helps you perfect your technique. Additionally, eccentric movements will help you improve your mind-muscle connection. After you continue this method long enough, you will eventually gain the ability to do a complete pull-up. Once you can, here's how to do it correctly. Before we begin, I'd like to go over the difference between a pull-up and a chin-up. Simply put, the pull-up uses a pronated grip. The chin-up, on the other hand, uses a supinated grip, which includes more biceps. For pull-up grip placement, I recommend gripping the bar just outside your shoulders. But I'd like to point out that it almost doesn't matter. Different grip lengths are going to affect different muscles and different joints. But ultimately, they're pretty much all going to use all of the muscles to some degree. If your goal is to get wider lats, then you might want to stick to a wider grip. If you want practical athletic strength, like what you see in America Ninja Warrior, you're probably going to want to vary your grip quite a bit. For the chin up, on the other hand, the supinated grip will typically only allow most people to keep their grip on the inside of their shoulders. From a dead hang, turn your chest upwards and retract your shoulder blades. Pull yourself upwards, but also pull the bar outwards. This will help keep a natural motion for your elbows. Imagine you are pulling the bar to your chest. If you keep your elbows in front of your chest, you'll probably find yourself engaging your lats more. For both the pull-up and the chin-up, the goal is to get your chin above the bar. With exercises like the pull-up, it is actually more common to see people perform it incorrectly than you are to see it performed correctly. The first major mistake is kipping. You've probably heard about kipping before, especially if you have a friend who does CrossFit. Now you may have also heard of all the CrossFitters who have torn their rotator cuff while kipping. In reality, kipping unto itself may not actually be unhealthy. In fact, it could actually be a mark of really healthy shoulders. How else can Ninja Warriors do what they do. The problem is most people don't have the stabilizing strength required to be able to take that kind of impact. If your body does not have the stabilizing strength to be able to perform kipping, then you will probably injure yourself. Overall, kipping is not something that should be performed by the extreme majority of people out there. Hand in hand with kipping is bouncing. Oftentimes at the gym, what I'll see is people bouncing themselves back up before they actually hit the full bottom of the dead hang. When you do this, you're actually just riding the elastic fascial tension that you've built up from the negative of doing a pull-up. Fascia is a huge topic and I'm going to make a video on it. But for now, just understand that for every motion you perform, you build elastic tension in the negative muscles. In this example, when you are dropping yourself downwards, the muscles that pull you up are being stretched out like a rubber band. When you bounce before reaching the dead hang, you're actually just using the fascial tension to pull you back upwards. As I stated earlier, if you bounce instead of using the dead hang, you're robbing yourself of one of the healthiest aspects of the pull-up. Thank you for watching. My goal for this channel is to uh, essentially make two different types of videos. One that are one minute short videos and hopefully make a catalog of almost every single type of exercise that you can perform. Uh, that way you can easily digest a technique video while you're at the gym and you know need to freshen up or need to learn how to do an exercise and then i'm going to be continue doing a more video essay style explanation regarding behind the workout or parts of fitness or uh, parts of how to do an exercise that type of stuff if you want to see more of that i ask that you just please subscribe and hit the notification